Jack Lifton today. He is the co-founder of the Technology Metals Research Company. He's also a very well-respected consultant in the advanced material sector. How are you today, Jack? I'm just fine, Tracy. How are you? I'm great. And uh, I'd like to just start and kick this off by asking you about some of the companies you selected for uh, being what I perceived. I perceived you to be identifying the most probable, uh, most successful plays, for instance. And I'd like you just to comment, if you could, about your top picks in North America, which were uh, Rare Element Resources and UCOR, please. My, my, I'm an operations consultant. And so my, my picks were based on my view of which of the North American companies that I'm familiar with is most likely to succeed based on, on my evaluation of their business model and of their management skills. That Those are the metrics I'm using. So that's how I pick them. Now, I, I, do, I do not mean to exclude Canadian companies from my list, but what I'm saying is we were I'm talking about those companies that will come into production the soonest. That's the that's the that's my another metric. When are they going to produce something? So I picked those two because I think they're running neck and neck, and I think they'll be the first to produce at heavy wares and commercial quantities in North America. All right. So basically, what you're saying is <clears throat> you weren't ruling out the companies that you excluded because we had a lot of emails uh, sent to me after your last series. Um, what you were simply doing was identifying the ones with the greatest chance of being successful. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. And and being successful soonest because the, the ind industry needs material, not promises. Okay. Now, with that, the only reason I want to back you up is, of course, uh, Great Western made some, a big news announcement uh, this last week. And, of course, Avalon has <clears> announced <throat> a large processing facility that they plan on building. Do you have any comments on either of those two announcements? Um, are you speaking of the uh, Great Western announcement that they had produced electrolytically some neodymium or didymium metal in England? Yes. Thank you for the clarification, the one they put oh. out Thursday evening. Um, well, I, I, I don't have enough information on that. However, uh, it, it, I have to say, uh, all, respect, all due respect, the fact that they have been able to do it is basically playing catch-up. A lot of people do that. Uh, it's one of the principal ways that rare earth metals are, are produced. I'm very glad to see that they've gotten to the point where they have actually uh, produced the metal that way. And since they are a uh, well-known producer of metal, less common metal, and, and with a very high uh, visibility and quality index, uh, that's that's a good thing for them to be able to produce their own metal. I'm more interested in when when they're going to produce their own feed stuff. And as far as far as uh, uh, Avalon, I am not particularly interested in announcements about projects that are that are far away. Uh, is it a good idea? Yes. Uh, is it going to happen anytime soon? I, I don't know. Uh, all of these companies in the, in the rare earth space are notorious for making announcements and then pushing back deadlines. So that's not how manufacture. I'm from the manufacturing world. That's not how it works. If I'm going to make so many uh, widgets in 2016, I can't push it back in 2016. So I, I'm not... Um, I'm not particularly thrilled by either of those. Well, I was going to say, in being on the manufacturing side, of course, <clears throat> we have attended events together where we have had large, uh, very large corporations on the manufacturing and discussed the importance and, and <clears throat> vital uh, issues relating to the, the need for rare earths, but yet they haven't been interested in investing in the exploration and production side here in North America, for instance. Do you have any ideas on why or how we might be able to get them more involved? In Manufacturers are tied to strict timelines and budgets. You cannot you cannot budget production years out at, without a hundred percent confidence that you're going to be able to get the raw materials and you're going to have the manufacturing capability. The junior rare earth miners do not present a picture of credibility with regard to meeting deadlines and timelines. That's why the large corporations are not going to invest. One thing, they're, the, the manufacturing companies are not in the mining business, almost 
I can't think of one offhand that is. They don't understand it. What they do understand is missing deadlines. Every time a junior rare earth miner says, well, instead of this quarter, it's going to be next quarter or the quarter after that, they, they, they put an, a chill on their relationship with, with uh, high volume manufacturers who are tied to strict budgets and timelines. All right, well, let's talk about a company whose timeline has been altered through arguably <clears throat> no fault of their own, Linus Corporation. Yeah. I mean, they've arguably uh, been dealing with some extraneous factors that they've had and variables that they've had no control on. Now, I know you've spent a lot of time <clears throat> in Malaysia. Can you give us an overview on what's happening with Linus right now for all of uh, us uh, shareholders in Linus? Uh, I think that Linus is doing quite well, and Linus does suffer from timeline degradation, if you want to call it something. However, they are actually, uh, they have in place and in operation a solvent extraction plant where they're able to separate and purify the light rare earths. Uh, it's, very, it's the largest one in the world as far as I know. And this is a very different game from a junior who hasn't even got the processing in place to make promises about deadlines. Linus, you're, you're absolutely right. In, in my opinion, Linus not meeting the deadlines has been due to political, uh, mostly to political factors that they couldn't possibly have predicted. Thank you very much for joining me today, Jack.